Hello, everybody. Welcome and thank you for coming to the Soap Hub Fireside Chat with four of your favorite um, days actors and, and one of your favorite GH actors, but we only have four, so do the math. Um, we have Eric Martzoff, Brandon Barash, Car Carson Boatman, nice to meet you, Carson, and Wally Kurth is here as well. And as you may have read, they have formed a new band called, and I think this is a great name, The Day Players. Um, uh, guys, welcome. And um, uh, Eric, tell me, how did you guys come up with the name of The Day Players? Well, I mean, that was, that was kind of a piece of cake. We definitely didn't want to call ourselves The Night Players. Um, uh, many, many of us, uh, Carson, I think, is the newest to the daytime genre, but um, we've been doing this a while. We have, uh, we have an interesting uh, generational uh, numbers game going on. We have Wally representing one generation. I'm a generation, Brandon's a generation, Carson's a generation. So we have a lot of daytime under our belt. And so day players just seemed like it was a no brainer. I remember, I don't know exactly. Who, do you remember, Brandon, do you remember who actually said, did you, didn't you come up with it? Yeah, I was driving, yeah. I was stuck. Brandon came up with it. I was stuck in traffic trying to drive to Lake Arrowhead. And it was like, you know, for, for those of you who don't know what that means, it should be like a two hour drive max. And I think it took us four. Uh, and it was just, it was brutal. And I'm just sitting there in traffic going through names in my head. And all of a sudden day players just dropped in. Originally, the name that we all loved was, and you will all understand this fans of days, Salem's lot but we didn't <laughs> we didn't feel like getting sued by Stephen King um because yeah. I love him uh and so uh the day players was uh was one that we instantly unanimously agreed on that is amazing and uh Brandon you've got experience being in a band with some fellow daytime actors can you tell me how that experience um uh, helped bring the day players up to speed? Like what were you able to contribute um, with like from a business sense of here's what we need to do to make this work? Yeah, I really haven't contributed anything to the band so far, uh, but no, it's been, uh, it's been, it's certainly made the task less daunting because when I, you know, when Port Chuck formed, it was kind of the brainchild of Steve Burton and then Scott Reeves handled a lot of the, musical and uh, technical logistics and having done shows um, as that band for you know the last 10 years it's definitely you know it, it just became kind of a laundry list of things like okay we need to do this we need to you know come up with a band name we need social media we need venues and having done the shows for so long you you know the different venues that we can go to and the types of venues and you know what works what doesn't work so it was uh, definitely advantageous to have another experience under my belt. And um, uh, guys, tell me about your musical influences when you were getting into music. Uh, which um, uh, artists did you gravitate towards and, and influenced you? We'll go uh, alphabetically. Uh, uh, well, no, let's not go alphabetically because I've gone to Brandon like three times now. Uh, Carson, how about you? Go reverse or that. <laughs> hold, hold, hold on. Hold on just a second. Hold on a second. I just want to say one thing. Yep. So I will say this about Eric. So we, I've been well aware of Port Chuck and Eric knew about Port Chuck. <clears throat> so for the last, I, I mean, Eric, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but at least seven or eight years, Eric keeps saying, like, we need, to, we need to do a Days of Our Lives version of Poor Chuck. And I'm always like, eh, no, no, no. I, I always say, no, 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 no. And then I, I went out and uh, in, in that, went to Nashville, and I just had a great time singing again. And so when I came back, I, uh, I called Eric, and I said, you know what? Let's do it. And, uh, and so we, we, we just we immediately thought of Brandon and Carson to fill up the group, the band, especially Brandon had already had experience with Port Chucks. We knew, we knew we needed that. And that, so that was sort of the beginning of, you know, how we all came together um, was really Eric hounding me all these years. And then me just saying, yeah, I think it's time to get out there. I think we need to sing some 
you know, songs and, and, you know, get especially after the quarantine, I think I was really itchy and I think Eric was too. I think we all are that, you know, live performing is, is something that we all enjoy doing. And, you know, when you're in a studio, you don't get to do that. And so, um, anyway, that's sort of the beginning of it. And, um, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> I agree with everything you said, Wally spot on. I did. I, I hounded okay. him. I hounded him for, for years because I, um, I, I've done my fair share of soap events, still am. And I believe in them. I, I love I love events. I think it's the perfect way to get out there and meet the people that deserve to be thanked for keeping us on the air for years and years and years. And But the musical element, the concert element, that was just just so bonding when, when, when we would go out there and play some music or do a Christmas concert or anything. Like the fans really, really responded to it. And yeah, I, I saw the success of Poor Chuck was was extremely uh, interested in it. I even had dinner with Scott Reeves at one point with Missy and had him in my had him in my dining room. Like, dude, I'm just I'm dying to do a day's version of this. <laughs> and Scott was always like, that would be so cool, man. You know, you should. You should. I just can't get anybody, you know, really. Then one day Wally just called me up and he said, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, something lit a fire, and uh, now we're now we're ready. I'm so I'm so excited about the four of these four guys, man. We're gonna. Part of it was too. See, I was in Nashville with Carson, and I saw Carson sing, and I I was really impressed. And uh, I knew Brandon sang, and I actually Scott was there. Scott was there too. So I talked to Scott about it. I talked to Missy about it when I was in Nashville, and I just thought, you know what? Now's the time. Let's do it. Yeah. Timing was right. Um. Do you think you guys could ever do a, a crossover with Port Chuck and I'll perform together? Maybe a double header? That'd be fun. That yeah, would be a lot of fun. Yeah. They've been they've been really gracious. We 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 went as far as to pretty much ask them and ask them for, you know, their blessing. And and Steve told me when I did his podcast, oh, yeah. said, dude, you don't you don't need our blessing. I'm like, yeah, but you know, we're, we're a tight little soap opera family when it all comes down to it. And we, we don't we don't want to rub anybody the wrong way. We, we want to make sure that you know, this is your baby and we plan to do this. And are you cool with it? Like, absolutely. I mean, I would see a crossover happening next month if it could. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it could. The guys um, that love off, music stick together. And to add on to what Eric was saying, you know, for me, at first, I, I thought I was in kind of a little bit of an awkward situation. It's like, well... I don't know, like I, I'm in, I'm in this relationship and, and I'm really happy here, but then I don't know, like these hot chicks are asking me to hang out with them, but I got to kind of get, get the blessing of, of the current hot chicks I'm hanging out with. And um, so I got to call them first and make sure they're on board. And, you know, it was great. I mean, I, I texted the guys and they said, of course, you know, uh, you have our blessing. And I said, look, this isn't me saying I don't want to be a member of Poor Chuck anymore, as a lot of people saw over the weekend we did a show. Uh, this is just me saying I want more. And so, um, yeah, I think an opportunity for a crossover, you know, a big event with both bands would be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Um, a colleague of mine, Sherry Smith, just uh, sent me a great question to ask you guys. Uh, talk about the band's voice, the type of... Uh, music that you'll be performing is it going to be pop rock a little country what um how would you define the uh tone of the band the answer is yes it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of everything and what i love about this group of guys in addition to the poor chuck group we're all very unique in our singing styles and our performing styles the music that we like mm -hmm. and it is going to be a little bit of everything you're going to see everything from current pop hits that have a different spin on them. Um, maybe, you know, some songs that you would never expect to be in a, uh, you know, like a rock and roll or acoustic show, but with a very different spin on them, you know, all the way back to like classic stuff, country, 80s, 90s, it's all over the place. And I know that sounds general, but it's really not. It's, um, yeah, we've picked out, how many songs have we picked out guys? Like eight or nine so far? Say close to ten. Yeah, we got more. Honestly, yeah. we got close to twelve. We might have twelve. Like 12. We might have twelve. Yeah, I think yeah, twelve. It, yeah. So it's uh, and they're all over the place. But the cool thing is, there is kind of a through line. 
there there is a very specific sound that we're starting to kind of uh, that's starting to coalesce with us. Wouldn't you guys agree? Because we put our own spin yeah. on each song, like you right. were saying. So there is a definitely a cohesive sound, even though we have kind of touching on what Eric was saying as well. These kind of tastes and um, and you know genres that we like spanning kind of through you know like a, a generational. Um, you know, just kind of span of songs and we all kind of just do what we like and we all do it together and we all put our own sound to it. So everything kind of sounds um, original. My goal, my goal for my goal for the set list was that you would be able to bring your grandfather, yourself and your daughter or your son to the show and they would all enjoy it. There would there's going to be something in there for each and every member of the family. So you can bring everybody can come. And that's 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 my goal, that everyone has a great time. Well, I have seen you perform many times over the years. Might we um, be seeing any any songs that you're known for um, be performed at, at these concerts, Seventh Son and, and others? No, um, I may do, you might get a song um, from way back when on Days of Our Lives, when Justin uh, was singing with his acoustic guitar. But no, other than that, we are, I am, uh, no Kurt and Taylor songs. Uh, um, yeah, these are all, what, what's really fun for me is that I am uh, playing my guitar a lot and learning these great, wonderful covers of pop rock songs that I've always liked and heard on the radio, but I've never really learned, never really sort of made, made them my own. And so I'm sort of discovering these songs with these guys and we're having a blast with the harmonies and finding parts and sharing, you know, verses and stuff. And it's just, we are really having a lot of fun in rehearsals. Yeah. And for someone <laughs> like me, who's never, who's never really, I mean, you know, Kirsten Taylor was all originals. We right. mainly did a, a few cover tunes, but it, we, we really worked our butt off doing original songs. And uh, I really am getting a kick out of, uh, you know, I, I could, we're singing a Beatles song, a Motown song. And I, um, I never really learned them, you know, I, and, and it's just been fun. I'm practicing my guitar. I mean, I'm getting a, becoming a better guitar player and, uh, and I'm getting to sing, you know, three or four part harmony with these guys. And I'm just, I'm really having fun and uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. And I, I think the audience is really going to like it. I think they're going to be impressed with their, our harmonies. And I think they're going to, I think it's going to be a really fun show. Do you have, got, uh, do you have um, cities and dates mapped out yet? Or are you still working on that? Do. We do. We, we do. Set for September, uh, four cities. We are going to be playing. I'm pulling it up here right now. We We're going to play. Oh, go ahead. Are you so, go ahead. You have them. Go ahead, buddy. I got, if you got them, tell the people. Them. Tell the people what they want to hear, Carson. All right, everybody. Tour dates. The day players starting September 15th, kicking off at the Stress Factory Comedy Club in New Brunswick, New Jersey, 7:30 p.m. September 16th, the Brokerage Entertainment Club in Belmore, New York, 7 p.m. Uh, uh, September 17th, the Stress Factory Comedy Club, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. And finally, September 18th, the Kabat Theater, Beverly, Massachusetts, 12.30 p.m., also an afternoon show. We are, hitting, we are hitting the East Coast with plans, of course, to hit many other areas of the United oh, States. Yeah. Perhaps there's no limits to where we're going to go with this because I don't, I, don't, I don't really know. Oh, we might on the moon. <laughs> we'll give Bezos a call and go up in his, you know. Well, ship. from the sound of it, Wally's already there, so. <laughs> <laughs> and any plans Sorry. to start this for people not and on the East Coast. What's that? I'm sorry, could you come again? Uh, any, any plans for streaming uh, for those of us not on the East Coast? Not as of now, no. Yeah. No, this we, no. this, we we probably will dig into that later, Michael, but honestly, right now, we're, we're just really focused on a live show. I think people are anxious to have the, a live music element and, and we want people to come and, and share that. The show that we're gonna provide, it's not your rock arena out there. Like you, you watch it on a video screen from Rose Easy in the back. 
we want to create a very intimate space, much like what we do for a living, except in a musical context. And the songs that we're playing have, have, have meaning. And we want to be able to look people in the eye while we're singing to them as well. There, there's, there's a connectivity with music that all four of us really love. When we get, get together and practice, we don't sit in opposite ends of the room. We sit at the smallest table and we are literally like maybe three feet away from one another. Yeah. And it's just a cool, intimate feel. And we want to translate that to an audience. Yeah. And, and as Molly was saying, the vocals, our vocals are going to be our strongest musical element. Yeah. We're not just going to get up there and karaoke. We're, we're actually structuring songs in a way in which these songs have never really been sung before. And we're doing it with our voices because these dudes can sing, man. It's, 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 it's really kind of, kind of something that hasn't been done yet, as far as I know, in our little genre. And, and regarding, you know, in regards to will we be streaming the show, even if we don't, um, like Eric said, or Brandon said, uh, you know, we're it, assuming everything goes as planned. Uh, we, we plan to be hitting, you know, many other areas of the country as well, the South, you know, the Midwest. Um, Absolutely. We'll come to a city this near is, This is the first one of many. Yeah. And um, guys, I was asking earlier, tell me about your musical influences growing up. Who did you listen to and who inspired you? Um, Carson, let's start with, with you. Um, I'm gonna list off four. I listened to a lot of George Strait, a lot of Tim McGraw, a lot of Maroon 5, and uh, a lot of Justin Timberlake. Great, they're all terrific. Uh, Brandon, how about you? I'm all over the place. I listen, you know, I mean, currently I love the Ava brothers and have for the last probably 12 or so years. Uh, growing up, it was a lot of, uh, you know, it was a lot of R&B actually. A lot of Marvin Gaye, a lot. And, and that's stuff that I don't really like, if you've seen me perform, I don't perform that stuff but it was a big influence. But then that turned into the classic stuff. A lot of Dylan, you know, a lot of Bowie. It, uh, that's kind of where my wheelhouse is. And Eric, how about you? I just, I love these responses because this is such a testament to how different we all are. <clears throat> our influences. I, I mean, I grew yeah. up in a household that had records playing all the time, but it was always about the voice and what they were saying. I, I grew up with Karen Carpenter in my ear. I grew up with Barry Manilow, Neil Diamond in my ear. These, these people that wrote these incredible songs, but also had very distinct vocal styles. And uh, so I'm a little bit all over the map too. I'm also a crooner by heart. I mean, give me, a, give me some Tony Bennett or Frank Sinatra and I'm a happy guy. So I love all of it. These are all such great names. Wally, how about you? Yeah, well, I'm older than all these guys, and I just remember when I was really little, and my sister bought like Beatles albums, and I was so I was Ooh. a big Beatles fan, yeah. and um, and uh, and then I got into like I remember going to college, and my girlfriend bought Stevie Wonder's. She got, got Stevie Wonder introduced me to Stevie Wonder's song "The Key of Life," and then I really got into Stevie Wonder. But I also loved Simon and Garfunkel. We didn't have we didn't have a lot of music. We didn't have we had a little turntable. When I was growing up, and I just remember getting Bridge Over Troubled Water and putting the headphones on and just listening mm. to Bridge Over Troubled Water like over and over and over again. And also listening to Jesus Christ Superstar, which was like the other album mm. that somehow landed in our house. We weren't, my parents didn't, I mean, I guess back in those days, we didn't really listen to a lot of music. I mean, my wife and I, we have like Sonos, so we just have, you know, music. You can, now you can just sort of stream any channel, any music, anytime you want. But, you know, back in the day, you had to buy an album. It was, it was a little bit of an effort to, to put it on the turntable and get it going. And, um, and I mean, I've been to, like, Springsteen concerts. And, and, uh, and I will say we're going to play a Boss song in this set. And yeah. maybe two. We never know. And, um, no, so, yeah. I mean, in, in the current stuff, uh, you know, Matchbox 20, I've, I've always liked them. Um, you know, anyway, yeah. Actually, I like a lot of the singer-songwriters of today. But, uh, and of course, country. Um, so uh, I'm like them. I'm like everyone. I, 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 I'm all over the place. A good song is a good song. And that's kind of what we're, I think that's what we're doing when we, we, we we're, we're not taking every song that people bring in. We're kind of like, does it work for us? 
is it something we want to say, you know, and so, and we want to make it really, you know, give it some nice, uh, you know, broad, you know, scope of, of, of lyrics and music, but also we got to make it our own with our voices. And um, so we're, you know, we're, we're having to sort of massage these songs and make them our own, which I think is really important too, because the more we make them our own, you know, the more authentic we'll be. And I think the more enjoyable it'll be for the audience. Yeah. And how does it work with the show and scheduling? Do you guys know your schedule is pretty far out? So that you can make all this happen. Well, we got our. Well, that's we got, exactly right. September is a hiatus for Days of Our Lives. And so that's the only reason why we chose that week to uh, begin our tour. Yeah, we have the, we have our dark weeks, which actually provide the perfect time to to schedule these tour dates without any kind of conflict whatsoever. So all we really have to do is uh, get our wives to let us go on tour for a little while. That's that's the biggest problem. <laughs> Getting them to say, "Sure, honey, go be a rock star for a week." Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's good it's good for us, you know, to get out of the house once in a while and to do some fun things with the boys. Right, Carson? No doubt. No doubt, Eric. That's just spot on. <laughs> um, Wally and, uh, and Eric, I, I'm sure you remember the days from, you know, when singing was done uh, all the time. Um, Fashions had those great musical numbers. Uh, you know, when Justin would sing to Adrian, it just uh, endeared viewers and um can you talk about um how that how that's still occasionally done on shows but but what have the shows lost by not being able to do that as as often because music is is such a uh, important part of of soap operas yeah no it's it's a very important part it's and unfortunately due to budget restraints and time restraints that we we don't get to use that as much as we used to but i it's it's romantic it's it's beautiful it's it's a it's a lovely way other than words to connect with a partner and you know from sandy to danny to to sound of music i mean it's just these are these are beautiful moments that songs only songs can create and i i miss it i, I wish they could incorporate it more into the shows but we need more of it i mean i don't know just thinking about it, just thinking about this, and, and Michael, you can probably confirm it. I probably have sung more songs on soap operas than probably anyone else in uh, the history of soaps. I mean, I must have sang at least 15 or 20 times on Days of Our Lives. I haven't sung on Days of Our Lives really since I came back. But on GH, I mean, my band was on the show. We probably sang at least 30 times. A lot of it was original music. And, um, and I'm still singing on days on General Hospital now. Yep. And I think it adds an incredible amount. I think it's great. I think the audience totally get, totally loves that, you know, that, that, what's the word? I mean, just. Intimacy. Uh, the intimacy, but also, I guess it it's an excitement. Up. Something, it's something different than just, you know, acting and just doing the scenes. You know, when you add some music to it, there's obviously a, the lyrics are poetic and, and, uh, and seeing these, you know, both characters were singers, so it made sense. It wasn't like, it wasn't a fantasy. Um, but like, for instance, on general, on days of our lives, um, you know, part of the, it was part of the plot was, you know, me sort of bringing Adrian out of her shell. I mean, she was really, you know, really wounded. And the songs that I sang to her was such a comfort to her and was such, like, like Eric said, it was such a connection. And that I was able to sort of, you know, bring her out, bring her back to life and use these songs to just like, you know, comfort her, but also inspire her. And, um, and then of course, on General Hospital, I was, you know, the whole story was that Lois made me a star. She thought mm -hmm. I was a good singer, so then she propelled me out into the, you know, to really become a singer. Whereas on Days of Our Lives, I was a singer in private. 
and then General Hospital as a singer in public. So I love the fact that I've been able to do, to add my musical sensibility to my characters. It's been such a gift. I feel so fortunate that I've had a career where I've been able to sing. I mean, I mean, honestly, I come from the musical world and who never, I never thought that I could be able to blend music and acting, but I've had a career where I have been able to, and, and I feel incredibly grateful. Um, and I would have to agree with you on you have sung more than anyone else on daytime because between the two shows, the uh, just uh, Ned's alter ego, Eddie Main, um, yeah. Nurses Ball. Oh, sure. Nurses Ball. I watch the Nurses Ball every year and I'm very envious. Uh, every well, year I good. check that thing out. That ball is uh, uh, number and the Chicago themed passion shows Eric were awesome oh my god the, but the Bollywood sequence that we did was we spent so much money on that it was so fabulous though and I have so many passions fans that distinctively remember that Bollywood sequence that we did and um the wicked the wicked sequence we did my wife choreographed that I don't even know if you know that no. Um, we did a whole wicked montage, which was Tabitha the witch's upbringing. So they, they did that whole thing, and um, oh, we had such a good time doing those things. What? I think we need to get into uh, someone's ear to do a uh, some sort of musical sequence in one of the Beyond Salem uh, episodes because I feel like that would be really the only part of our universe where the four of us can come together. Because my understanding is that it's it's kind of a parallel days universe, you know, that it does intertwine into the reality. But uh, that'd be killer. That's a great uh, idea, man. I'll yeah. I'll meet you outside Leah's door tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. There you go. Pound. We have an idea. We have an idea. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, Brandon. I think the Beyond Salem idea is excellent because it it they do those shows very well because. Um, even the title Beyond Salem, it's not gonna, I believe this is the word they use in television, it's not gonna cannibalize the mothership. And, mm -hmm. it, and so anything and everything they do in Beyond Salem kind of works. I chatted Frank up at the Emmys on uh, Friday, Frank Valentini, the executive producer of General, and I uh, asked him if they might um, create original GH content for Hulu and, and following in the path that um, Beyond Salem is, is paved for the rest of the three other shows to um, mm -hmm. follow, which would be great. Um, yeah. Uh, Let me guess, he probably said, probably. He said security. Well, I mean, let's he let's be honest. I mean, it feels like that's, that's where, I mean, television obviously is not headed there, it is there. Yeah. And right. so I think it's, I, it was very, very, very smart for you know the people at Days NBC, uh, whoever you know, whoever's brain this came out of, it was, it was Ken, to say, you know what, this is where the future is. Let's go there, and they're paving a way for for that to happen. Uh, in in a sense that you know these daytime shows may exist in the future solely on streamers, and it only opens uh, up more doors for daytime. Yeah. which so is smart. a welcome thing so for smart. all of us. Not only all of us on this Zoom, but for millions out there that love their stories. I mean, absolutely, daytime just, yeah. gives us more stories to enjoy. You know, it's great. Daytime mm -hmm. is not being left behind in the streaming world, thanks to days. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, Eric, that was a, a good question. I mean, I did kind of, um, you know, spring it on him at the Emmys in the press area uh, when I was talking to Frank, um, and something non-committal would have would have been fine, you know, because I'm just asking him off the cuff. But he actually said that um, he thinks it's a terrific idea. Um, Frank was kind of ahead of the game years ago. Uh, he would take two characters from different ABC soaps and put them in an elevator and just have them interact. And they were digital shorts that appeared on soapnet.com and abc.com. So I think people have been trying to figure out the way to create content that will resonate with viewers. And with Days being on to its third project, I can't help but think that the Peacock must be very pleased with the amount of subscribers that are signing up for it. Yeah, I don't think I'm killing any mystery by saying they are pleased. Um, the, the numbers were good. They weren't just good, they were 
right. extremely impressive, which which obviously catapulted into some other orders. And I, I, I go to a lot of um, network, uh, you know, big powwows with journalists from all over the country and they're grilling about streaming and primetime lineups. And I'll slide my question in there. How do uh, the daytime shows do on your streaming platforms? And they say, oh, terrific. Uh, oh, we got great numbers from them. So mm. I think that's, that is just awesome. Um, oh, you know what's hear. great about, what's great about, and this just dawned on me, being able to binge a daytime series, you know, you finish and I just got really excited because right before I was looking for the Zoom code for this call and I was going through my email and my mailbox and I got a notification that season two for only murders in the building yeah. is either available right now or going to be available very soon. And I totally geeked out. But what's great about streaming a daytime show that's not like Beyond Salem that has a finite number of episodes you could it doesn't end you know what i mean there there are you know literally thousands of episodes and i don't know how many are available on on peacock but you don't hit the end of the season and go oh man i gotta wait for the next one they can just reload and reload and reload yeah i think we're on right now what are we on Fourteen thousand four hundred and ninety six or seven i just got yeah yeah yep it's crazy it's awesome and I think what the show does that's smart is they will, um, if there's a tag in the digital series, and then they'll say, well, if you want to pick this up, pop over to the broadcast on Monday. Yeah, it's so smart. It's so freaking smart. They know what they're doing. It's a pretty well oiled yeah. machine over there. Yeah. Um, I think uh, what I'd like to do now is open up for some questions, unless, was there, was there anything I didn't ask that uh, you guys wanted to get the word out on specifically? Um, Instagram page, do we want to Instagram, throw yeah, out? Instagram and, and website. We are um, both the Day Players Band on the internet, so the dayplayersband.com and the Day Players Band on Instagram as well. Maybe we'll have a Twitter one of these days, but as of now, those are the two places you can find us. Everything okay up there? Okay. I just heard a little crash from my daughter's room. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you it's can not. find us. Um, Come check us out if you if you go to our to our uh, Instagram page, which again is at the Day Players Band. There is a link for our website where you can buy tickets. You can DM us, ask us questions. Uh, we will you know, in a perfect world, get back to you guys. But uh, that's where you can find us. We have separate tiered tickets as well. We're offering uh, yes. a VIP package as well, um, which which is going to be pretty special. It's going to give you backstage mm -hmm. access and we're going to do some photos and just just stuff that you don't get with the regular ticket. So we encourage people right. to check that option out too. As, as well as a, uh, you know, a, a, a post-show we all kind of go through stories about why we picked the songs and just story, you know, yeah, Q and A, you know, between us four and kind of so it'll, it'll be a cool, a much more intimate, uh, personal experience. And Carson will talk. Carson will talk to each and every one of you as the possessed devil from the <laughs> possession story, yeah, don't, and then don't give you a giant hug guys. afterwards and tell you that everything is all right. That's included in the package as well. Yep. Carson will be performing in the red suit every night. Yes. <laughs> as, as I asked him, like, you got to wear that. He's like, dude, you know, I'm is legendary. Carson, I gotta, it legendary. I got to ask you, what was it like the first time you saw an air show where the voice, I believe the voice modulation of the devil, like, is added in post? Yeah. So, what was it like the first time you heard that voice come out of you? Uh, it was cool. I, I really liked I was I was the whole time I was like, is ever. You know, they modulated everybody's voice, but everybody's voice takes the modulation differently. So I was like, what am, what am I going to sound like, you know? Um, but yeah, it was really cool. It, it was fun. But Eric is right. That suit was uh, all, all but glued on to my body. <laughs> it, uh, so I don't think I would even be able to sit on a stool in those pants. So I, I won't be able to perform. Yeah, but you'll look good, as Dolly Parton says. Pain is beauty. You know, you got you to gotta put up with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's only a 90-minute show. You can handle that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Fine. And to hit the high notes, that, that suit is very beneficial. <laughs> yeah, we'll do yeah. some DGs too <laughs> to work on those guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've always wondered this for, for all four of you can weigh in on this. When you're at a personal event and a personal appearance and you have that eye contact moment with a fan, what's what are the what is your sense of what they want to communicate to you? It, it, do they want to communicate that scene you did in particular really touched me and this is a reminiscent of a familial connection that I have or had? What's the thing that fans want to communicate to you when they do get to meet you in person? I think it's different. I think it's different yeah. depending on who you meet and what the circumstances are. Uh, I'm sure all of us Carson probably can still um, speak to this, even though he's generally uh, newer on the scene. But the coolest thing for me has been, you know, starting on GH, you go to your first big fan event, you don't know anybody in the room. And then you have event after event and you recognize the people over and over again. And it feels almost like uh, a, a family, family reunion of sorts. And the coolest thing for me is when it's two things. It's when people say, you see this group that we're in, that we're seated at this table together, every event we come to, we met because we had a common interest in you or your show. And we have these lifelong friendships now that have forged and are, are maintained because of your show. That's one. The second one is uh, I came to this country not knowing English and learned English watching your show. Those are the two coolest things, and it just makes it all worth it for me. I, I echo what Brandon said. I'll add one more thing. The thing that always trumped me was I just want to let you know I was stuck in the hospital for about six yeah. months, whether it was chemo, yeah. whether it was a car accident, whether it was this. And the only hour that I look forward to after being prodded with needles was one o'clock when days yeah. came on. It was the one hour that I didn't have to think about anything else other than the dumb decisions that Brady was making with his love life. And that made me, that makes me happy, you know, to be that escapism. Yeah. You think escapism as kind mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, it can be so important in some instances. Mm -hmm. So that would be my two cents on that. 100%. And Wally? Can I, well, one of the things that I always enjoyed was that when people say, I used to watch this show with my grandmother. Mm. And my grandmother's no longer no longer here, but I I watched with my mom, and now I watch with my daughter, and it's just like wow, exactly. It's it's a generational, traditional, uh, connecting thing, a family connection that uh, that they, it's like a touchstone, and uh, mm -hmm. and they're really you know they, and they light up when they see you because it's like they feel like they really know us because you know we are in close up a lot and uh and we're and we're often you know portraying really often really intimate heart filled scenes where you get to see our souls i mean our 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 emotions are there and it's our emotions and it's our you know being that we're you know shining out there and um i always i, I don't take that for granted and uh i tr really try to really connect with these people who have come and and uh i know it means something to them and i'm i don't blow them off i don't i mean honestly speaking of, I, i've become friends with a lot of them and i never ever dreamed that being an actor i would actually you know gain friends <laughs> i thought all my friends would be my, my my actor friends but i've i've gotten some wonderful friends that i met you know from people who used to come and see the band or come to, you know, mainly that because we did so many band of it. We, don't, we did so many concerts out there. But yeah, I mean, they become friends. And, um, but also the people that have seen us for the first time or meet, I still meet people for the first time and they're like, oh my, I've enjoyed you all these years. And it's just, it's really heartwarming and it's often always positive. And um, these weekends can be exhausting, but I also think doing the concerts, I'm going to be more fulfilled, you know, performing mm. and, and singing, um, because that's what I love to do. And I'm not just, you know, sitting on a stool, you know, just talking or just signing autographs. I mean, we'll be doing that too, but 
it, it really adds a lot that I get to perform because I, I love, you know, singing and I love my music. And, and uh, so I, I, I really am looking forward to these events. That's awesome. Uh, it's going to be again, gotten to see you perform. I mean, it's like going to a, you know, uh, a concert. Um, uh, I think we have some questions. Uh, does, um, do we have Pam Rogers? Can we unmute Pam if Pam would like to ask a question? Or actually, I think we have Sandra. Sandra, would you like to ask a question? Or Michael, we have, we have we have Pam on the screen for you there. Sorry, I uh, see Pam. There she is. Hey, Pam. Hi, Pam. Eric, I have a question. Sure. How did you get connected with Sammy Lee from the fundraiser for the dogs? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? involved doing the fundraisers with Sammy Lee for the dogs? Oh, Samantha's friends? That's what you're asking about? Yeah, I was just curious how oh. you got involved with all oh. that. Oh, I was, I was, I was, I was approached because of my affiliation with the show. Um, Sammy uh, approached me and asked me if I would be interested in this event. I happen to love dogs and if any, if I could give some time up to help raise some money for these CNI dogs. I heard about Sammy's story. If you're not familiar with it, I'm not going to tell you it now, but it's it's a beautiful story of heroism and what she has overcome. Um, I was inspired. And every single time I go to that event, I feel wonderful about humanity and just people. And so selfishly, I just feel great flying away from that event. So I make a point of doing it whenever I can. Yeah, but I was, I was approached. It's one of the little perks we get from being in daytime. Sometimes we Actually, were you to... there at the last one? I was there at the last one. I yeah. thought you were yeah. there. Yeah. I know you guys look like you're having a lot of fun. We are. We're going to have more fun out on the road. You better come see us. I want to buy Key and I live in New York, so it costs a lot for me to go there. Fair enough. Okay. We're pretty close to New York, though, Pam. Just saying. We're going to be in New York. That's right. See, I got you now. I stumped you. Uh. <laughs> oh, I think, uh, I, and now we have, uh, well, I hope Pam, Pam, I hope we can make it. Um, and Sandra, we have Sandra here. Sandra, would you like to ask a question? Yes, hi, anyone can answer this. Um, will we get a taste of the day players fan on the soap? Huh? Be, it'd be cool. Uh, like Brandon said, I think it'd be really fun, uh, to do it in a, in a kind of beyond Salem style, because I, I feel like that is kind of the only way it would make sense for all four of our characters to come together and maybe kind of this like, you know, al alternate universe type of uh, situation. And but th that being said, it's interesting that, you know, you're not allowed to videotape a Broadway show. And there's a reason behind that. The reason being is that it's, it's meant to be experienced live. You don't want to uh, in any way diminish the interest of it being live on stage by, by taping it. So in a sense, we, we, you know, coming to see the live show in itself is the experience, you know, that you can't get watching it on your computer at home. That's and we're going to be up close and personal. We're really going to be up close and personal. So I think that's the way to see it, if you're going to see it. No doubt. I hope you all guys come to San Antonio. <laughs> Man, that would be gone Texas. We would like to. Love to go to Texas. Why yeah. Not? Well, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think Ron Carlovati is in New York as well. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. get him a comp. Um, and now uh, we have the Kelly public cover. Close. <laughs> Hi, Cal. Hi. I really want to know how did three of you escape getting possessed? <laughs> because I oh, know no. Brandon on GH back then, you were damn scary back then. 
fun and part. Wally, I kind of want to see Wally get possessed. <laughs> oh, I would have loved that. Oh, oh yeah. I would have loved that. I don't, know, I don't know what happened. Those yellow contacts aren't too comfortable, though. No. I, I don't know. Being possessed and singing would have been awesome. There you go. <laughs> I went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to stay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why not? Sure. Oh, I'm up in Canada, so I'm a little further mm. away than New York. Uh, well, what's funny, maybe we'll try to make our way up there. Who knows? I'm in the smallest province in Canada. Lots of beaches, lots of outdoor space. And I work in the summertime in a haunted theater. Oh. Ooh. Talk about possessed. <laughs> what's your best ghost story? Um, hearing a footsteps upstairs when you're by yourself, been there, done that, been there 17 years, and one step, drag, one step, drag. Ooh, it's a, it's crazy. rumored to be an old actress with a wooden leg. Wow. And she's upstairs. Yeah, so you got a pirate wow. living up there. Nope. <laughs> It, it could be a uh, old sea captain with a wooden leg too. Yeah, there's are there's two are you sure about that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're a rum running town, my friend. Yeah, yeah. I live in I live in the East Coast. Wow. Hey, you guys Planet want a Canada's... ghost story? Wow. I got a weird story. I got a weird story for you. It Here. just happened oh. about Perfect for an a hour ago. Side chat. Oh boy. So uh, freak us out. My freak dad. Us out, bud. My, my dad passed away five years ago in December, and I have not been able to delete his number from my phone. So Yikes. it's still there. So uh, just to, it brings me comfort to see it when I bring up my speed dials and he's right there, number one. So anyway, uh, I called my mom about an hour, hour and a half ago. I was doing, mm. I was getting ready to do dishes. I figured we'd chat while I was, you know, do, do, cleaning up the kitchen. She didn't pick up. And so I set my phone down on, we have this island in the kitchen. I set my phone down on the island behind me, kept an earbud in, in the event that she called me, I could just push the button and talk to her. So I'm putting dishes away and I see a glass of water. I'm about to grab the glass of water and my phone, my earbud starts ringing like it's calling somebody. Not like somebody's calling me, but like it's calling somebody. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm thinking that's weird. I'm not my I haven't even touched my phone. It's sitting on the island. And I thought maybe my fiance upstairs was calling somebody and her phone linked to my earbud. Anyway, I just picked up my phone to see what was going on. My phone was calling my dad. Oh can't explain it. It was the strangest, strangest thing. Oh my word, that is yeah. scarier than any of the ghost stories in my theater. So bizarre, so bizarre. Oh yeah. my great. So, but you guys there, need there to do day players in my theater. Cool. All time. right. 287 seats, 288 with a ghost seat. And I'm not kidding, we have a ghost seat. That, that's awesome. That's um, coming. Yeah, that sounds Come great. Halloween I'm show. down for that. There. Come yeah. on, PEI there, folks. Halloween. Prince Edward Island, Canada. Come on down. Wow. Right. What a, what a, that's a powerful story. Um, Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it was. That's nutty. It, it, it's pretty, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's nice, actually. Um, it was, it was, it was comforting. Yeah. Comforting. That was the word. That was the word. I'm glad you had yeah. that experience. Thanks. Um, guys, I know we, uh, we wanted to keep you, uh, we've kept you longer than, than we uh, asked of your time. Uh, so, was there anything else that um, that we can ask about the day players? And and it sounds terrific because you guys are all so uh, personable. And I think anyone who goes to the show is gonna be able to have that that connection, that that comforting connection um, that we've kind of all been missing out on uh, for a couple mm. of years now. And that's why it was so great to see everybody at the Emmys. Um, and I hope yeah. we get back to that and. And Eric, I actually, this was so embarrassing. I, I have that tank top and I almost wore it today, but I, I... 
<clears throat> one day I'll, I'll wear a shirt on a Zoom. I just got so comfortable not wearing clothes on Zooms, you know? You're lucky I'm wearing anything, Michael. You know, and, and one day I'll be able to wear that, maybe. maybe. You can wear it. I've seen your workout video. Bless you. What do you mean, can you wear it? You can Bless wear you. whatever you want, you know? I'll be the next Wellness Wednesday for Soap Club. I saw you at the Emmys. You're looking good, my friend. You're looking good. Totally yeah. unsolicited, but thank you so much. I guess, I guess the last thing I, I want to leave with anybody who has questions about the day players bands that it's not, it's not a group of guys that are just out there trying to sing some songs because we happen to be on a show. Yeah. These are four guys that can sing, do have musicality. There's, there's, there's a lot of talent within each and every nugget in this group. And I'm proud to be a member of this band. This isn't just a little something that this was thrown together. A lot of thought was put into this and it's about the music. It's about storytelling and music. And I think people are really gonna resonate with it. I'm excited to, to present what we got going on. Right now it's in Brandon's room. We, we, we go to his house and we practice. He's, by the way, he's a great host. He puts out these ornate nuts and like drinks and like all this stuff that we like. It's just a cool setup. So, but we enjoy each other's company and we really enjoy the sounds that we're all making together. So. It's good. I'm just saying it's good. It is. It's, it's one of those, and I'm not just saying this because I'm part of it. It's one of those lightning in a bottle moments where you're like, shit, how did the four of us come together? There's no ego involved. And that's not me saying there's any ego in Port Chuck. There was none there either. Like we traveled 12 years together, not one disagreement. And it's the same thing here. It's just, we'll be doing a song and one of us will say, yeah, it's not really, not really working for me. I, I'm not seeing where this works. And no one gets upset. Everybody works together. And again, we're all so different. Our musicality is all very different, but it just comes together in such a beautiful way. And I couldn't be happier to be a part of this group. And, and we're all just so like, I think Wally and Eric and myself are really good about being really patient with Brandon specifically. You know, he comes along. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, that, was, that was fully. Uh, he's a comedian <laughs> as well. Yeah yeah no but yeah it's so much like like they like we were saying earlier we have honestly too much fun uh every single time yeah. together and, and have rehearsals it's just i i can't wait i i'm, I'm excited because i don't i i'm excited to feel what the energy is going to feel like when we're on the road and in a venue like i, I don't even know what that's going to be like but i know it's going to be so much fun do you know michael do you, know that, you know that this guy carson used to be in a boy band you mind me saying that carson <laughs> I, in the words of Johnny Carson, I, I did not know that. Uh, what was the I name? did not know that. He was legitimate band. Tell no, me. I, 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 I believe you. Carson, what was the name of the um, band? Um, the band was called Citizen Four. We were signed to Island Records for a couple of years. We, we toured uh, all across the U.S. and Canada with, with uh, Sabrina Carpenter. And uh, we've got a few singles out on, on Spotify with a few million streams. Uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you start a, if you ever start another band beyond this one, and you're not going to want to because this one's going to be so epic. You're good. Yeah. It's got to be called Carson and the Boatmen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I. Yeah, it does. It really does. Yeah. And it's all yacht rock. That's right. It. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's yeah. all Fleetwood <laughs> Mac and Christopher Cross there. Oh, sailing. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Form on cruises. Yeah, the, the boat go. boys, the beach boys, the boat boys. Yep. Yeah. The boat and if boys. there's any question out there about uh, the diversity of our music, you should know that the first song that we actually completed as a group. <laughs> You're going to tell them? I'm going to tell them. No, I'm not going to tell them the name of it. I'm just going to say okay. it is from a Disney movie. It is a Disney song. Yes, it is. And animated movie. The animated movie. It's animated never really movie. been sung by anyone other. Well, obviously the person that sang it, but it is an animated character, a favorite of Disney, made a lot of money for Disney. And that we're doing that song. And it's hilarious. Yeah. And it's great. It's one of our favorites. It is funny. Yeah. It's, so, it's pretty great. great. We, we, yeah. We it ain't all just, you know, masculine rock and roll. We're, 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 we're getting into... We're getting, we're going to get into people's hearts 
souls on this. I one. thought you. I thought you were going to say something else. What did you think I was going to say, Brandon? <laughs> you were going to get into someone's um, minds. Oh, my, yeah. 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 That's yeah. what I. That's what I'm going to get into. Yeah. Um, well, guys, listen, <laughs> uh, Brandon, Carson, Eric, <laughs> went alphabetically there. Thank you so much for coming today, and we will continue to promote your upcoming appearances with the Day Players. And for information, go to thedayplayersband.com. Yep. Awesome. That is thank it. You. How about if we unmute everybody and let everyone say thank you and yep. show their appreciation. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.